it hurts. And the Lord wants to take you away. I mean, the Lord, the enemy wants to take you away from the Lord. So he'll, he'll literally hype you up and make you think you carry some weight spiritually that you don't carry. How do we get that weight? Number one, you got to assess your prayer life. Jesus displayed prayer. Write this down. Study, make a note to study the way Jesus prayed. Study when he prayed. What were the circumstances when he was praying? What were the words that he was saying? Notice how he still positioned God, even though Jesus is God manifested flesh. Jesus is the spoken word manifested. Here he is understanding his position as a son going to the father. He modeled what we should be doing. In his toughest times where his sweat was so heavy like blood, he was on his knees talking to his dad. Ask yourself, in my toughest, in my toughest times, was I still praying or did I faint? Because Jesus won. Did he or did he not? You got to start asking yourself, do I really believe this? Because if you believe it, when my mama was dying in front of me, literally dying, I had a different level of faith than a lot of the people that was in that room. Because I actually believe Jesus died on that cross. I believe that heaven is after this life. I believe, not because I made it up, but because my mother's fruits showed me that she's going to heaven. The Lord started sending me signs right before my mom died. I was singing songs to her and all of a sudden a song came into my spirit. Some of you guys are wondering, how do you hear God? The Lord will drop, the Holy Spirit will drop songs in your spirit. That's why you got to watch your music. Music imparts spiritual things. I was so team breezy. I realized breezy, if I keep him on rotation, it creates an atmosphere in my house for sex scenes. Oh, we're going to talk about it today. Yeah. Y'all, I ain't, listen, I ain't the church kid or the church lady or the evangelist that's going to stunt. I was Team Kales. If you don't know who that is, great. Good job. But if you know who that is, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Here I am, a single woman consistently playing R. Kelly. What did it breed for me? I'm trying to see like it's ready. See like it ain't, ain't, ain't. Okay, you can't play that long enough. At some point, you're trying to make that happen in your life. Now, see, she said movies too. That's deep, Antonia. Exactly. Movies. See, I ain't no movie person because music made movies in my brain. And because I have a level of faith where I can make anything happen, I'm like, I'm about to create an atmosphere. I realize these songs is imparting something into me. Because words are images in your mind. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to give you, give you a couple things. When you walk away, you got some studying to do. So as my mom was dying, I'm holding her hand. And then I hear a song that I ain't sung. To, well, I've, I've got, that song is the furthest thing from my mind. That's how I knew the Holy Spirit gave it to me. The song says, soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. I'm listening to this song. I'm like, that's, I ain't sung that since I was a kid. And I just happened to look down at my mom's hand. It was turning blue. This means my mom is about to die. This song is coming to me, letting me know, be calm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the king. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. No more crying there. I said, wow. I'm looking at my mama hand and I'm looking at everybody else. They still in denial. Listen, that's why I say, tell the truth to yourself. Cause I got something in that moment that most people didn't get. And I just started rubbing her hand. As my mama transitioned, I'm hearing where she's going. Your, the only reason I could hear that is because I was spiritually available. God is not promising that you will never have a storm. Do you know how heartbreaking it is to watch your mama go from a full woman to a skeleton? She looked like a skeleton when she was gone. 
That's not what she wanted for her life. I'm not standing before you today to tell you that it's going to be perfect. I'm not standing before you today to say that my mama was perfect. My mama has stuff. Meanwhile, the Lord took her out of here. She's in heaven. So please don't get it twisted. Don't let the enemy, somebody right now even is feeling condemnation for something that they did, something they can't forgive themselves for. You feel the enemy will condemn you. He will make you feel like you're not good enough. You're not holy enough. You're not perfect enough. And he wants you to feel like that so that you don't walk in the authority that Jesus Christ has given you. But I'm here to tell you as a representative of Christ on your worst day, on your broke day, on your hurt day, on your depressed day, don't ever let the devil tell you that he, that you are not good enough, that you didn't make, you're not perfect enough. So the Lord has turned from you. He will never take, turn his back from you. So don't be conform to this world's thoughts because that's a worldly thought perfection is a worldly thought satan literally said in his heart somebody look that scripture up the bible says that he said in his heart he wanted to be high if i could just go be higher than god you want to be perfect cast out of heaven so what does he do on earth he puts higher thoughts in your head that arise above the word of the Lord. What does he do? He makes beauty be the thing that you think about more than Jesus. He makes a man be the thing that you think about more than Jesus. He makes your kids be the thing that you think about more than Jesus. But meanwhile, the Lord, the Bible shows us in every circumstance, when God is not the center of your life, everything is be an idol. And the first commandment is what? I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. The first commandment is what? Anybody know what the first commandment is? How did I my situation? Exactly, Gosh. Darnella. Exactly, Darnella. There shall be no other gods before me. Gods is, you don't have to sit in the corner and pray to Buddha for that to be a god just so we clear on what an idol is. Idols are things that literally you put before God. So there's a movement where it's like beauty, 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 women putting their beauty. I'm here to be cute. Hello, I love to be cute, but never will it ever get in the way of whatever God is telling me to do, period. None of this makes me. So if something were to happen, it won't change my faith in God. You got to ask yourself, do I believe in God for real, for real? Because when I'm broke, do I pray or do I just complain and try to figure out a hustle or then I start compromising or I don't pray because I feel like God ain't got my back? What happens when things change? When someone dies, do you lose faith? It can happen. Don't beat yourself up. Repent and turn back to the Lord because he never took his eyes off you, not for a second. Man ought to always pray. Don't faint. Where I'm from, we say, don't fold. <laughs> don't fold. I thank God for a military daddy because he taught me you don't fold, period. Does that make sense, guys? So your prayer life is oxygen. When you do not have a prayer life, the enemy can pop you around like you ain't nothing. He just like pimp stamping you everywhere. And he like literally, he will bury you in oppression. So I want you guys to know there's some struggles that you can't figure out because you don't have the spiritual knowledge. I'm not here to be religious. There's spiritual knowledge. If you notice that every time, you know, somebody in your family, there's always this thing where, you know, a baby is miscarrying in multiple people. There's a curse operating. Spiritual knowledge will allow you to, you can assess, is everybody broke in every family and every little circle, everybody broke? There's a curse. Is everybody pretty and balling, but ain't got no man? Curse. You got to start looking to see what are the fruits so that I can then go and pray. And you have to pray with the right knowledge or it just becomes babble. How do we get the right knowledge? The Bible says in Psalms 119, the entrance of, I don't know which part is, because somebody looked that up. <laughs> the entrance of thy word brings light. The entrance. So when the word of God enters my heart, it begins to expose light to dark places. If you've ever been through domestic violence, I have. 
when you really start to break down what love is biblically and you study on it and you begin to just chew it and you spend time repeating and rehearsing the word of God, meditating on it day and night, you will start to see that there are relationships that actually planted seeds that allowed you to mentally accept abuse, verbal or physical. So now that you have the understanding, you can then include the Holy Spirit and begin to pray. Father, your word says this about love. I decree and declare that I will have a loving relationship with friends. I will have love. I will give love and receive love. I bind up ungodly love. I bind up this spirit of abuse. You'll begin to know your legal rights. And so you pray with according in accordance to the scriptures. Number one, assess your prayer life. Number two, you're praying in accordance to those scriptures. And this is really in no order, but point three, you got to assess your life truthfully so you can start to identify things that are working in your life. Because there, if you, the Bible tells us, somebody please take notes on scriptures. That way everybody can have scriptures because I'm not preaching from my feelings. I'm preaching, this is biblical knowledge, okay? I have life examples. But this is like the Lord will, when you include the Holy Spirit in everything you do, you'll begin to get revelation. Write this down. Ask the Lord to give you the spirit of revelation. When you pray, say, Holy Spirit, you spirit of truth, spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, fall on me. Proverbs talks about knowledge and understanding and wisdom like nobody's business. We need it. Okay, so here we are. Ask the Lord to show you traits, fruit that your family bears that's not in alignment with his promises. And then you have to actually know your legal rights. The kingdom of, the kingdom of God is a legal system. So in order to pray and to actually have fruit, you need understanding of how this system, this kingdom that you're in works. Am I making sense? Let me pause. Let me see what's going on. <laughs> so Wanda said, don't fall, period. I love the way you said period. <laughs> Listen, this is what I love about, like, you get to be yourself. However you, like, you get to be yourself and love the Lord. Somebody needs you to show up the way that you are. That's why I love my sis Des. She's herself. It's her personality. It's her thing. She's being herself and God is shining a light on her so that people are drawn to who she is. So often we are in an age where it's like everybody look like Kim K or all these, whatever these lookalike things is going on. No, look like you. There's a people, a tribe of people that's called to you. They need to see you so they can have belief in God. Let your light shine before men. That's a scripture. So that it glorifies God in heaven. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. So that the men see your works. Look that scripture up. That's in, I think, Matthew. Is it Matthew? Somebody look it up. Somebody, y'all. Yeah, so check that. Check that actual scripture. It says literally, I love it. Kendall said, Matthew 5. It says so that men see your good works. That's what we call in 2023. It's popping. <laughs> when they see you popping, they need to say, I want to serve her God. I want to live how she living. How does she think about this? How does she, do what, what mindset did it take to get those results? And then you say, listen, start with my prayer life. Do you know when you have a prayer life, the Lord will begin to minister to you like nobody's business. Your prayer, it has to be based on the scripture. That's where your maturity will begin to come. Because the more of the scripture that you get into you, when you begin to say the scripture, the devil has to bow down. Has to.
Yep, you're good. Yeah, your good work seen before men. It glorifies God. Let your light shine so that God gets the glory. So your life can't be looking like crap, is my point. And it's not so you can like get the glory. God gets it. Our job is to give the glory to God. I'm a partner in a company right now. Literally, I didn't do nothing. The Lord just showed me they was about to do it. And then they did it. That's because I had a prayer life. So when you have a prayer life, you'll naturally start to see that certain things that take your attention, it don't take your attention anymore because the Holy Spirit will be tugging at your heart. So then where you used to spend eight hours binge watching something, the Holy Spirit will be very calmly reminding you about prayer. You'll have an urge to pray. You'll have an urge to go and give to someone. You'll have an urge. The Holy Spirit will put somebody on your spirit and you'll just start praying for them. Then they'll call you and say, you know what? I did this. And then all of a sudden this happened. You, the prayer is literally oxygen, but it ain't going to do nothing for you if you're not praying the scriptures because the scriptures are your sword. And beware of false humility because we got so many people, especially black. I'm, I don't know. I listen, my audience is international, but I'm going to speak to black America right now. Black America, there's a poverty spirit. There's false humility. You're not comfortable with praise. Oh, no. You don't want to ask for too much. I don't want to be cocky. Listen, I boast in the Lord. The Lord literally made me a partner in the company. I make big checks every week because the Lord did it. What well, I'm, well, I'm going to hide about that for? You know what I love? I can give, I can give. When somebody texts me and say, man, I, I just had my babies, but I can't even afford to stay because the babies came prematurely. I, like we trying to figure it out. I'm going to pray for you. You want to say that or you want to say how much it costs? I'm about to send it to you. Not because of me. That is, that gives, the Lord did it. That's the Lord's money. The Lord needs us to have more money. But if you're scared to talk about it, then what? How you going to get it? And when you get it, what you do with it? if we have oppression from our history in black America. A lot of religious people and just in general from our roots, there's false humility. Look it up. These are things you, I'm just dropping things that you need to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you. We need to be givers. We need to have abundance. Look at the man who literally, he was not even, he didn't have the Holy Spirit, but he prayed consistently and he gave to the poor consistently so then the lord had to bless him spiritually led him to peter that man didn't even have the knowledge it's the uh the uh, court i think his name is cornelius let me look that up real quick let me see is that an x cornelius hold on i need y'all to see what this really be like yeah he converted his faith let's go hold on Acts 10 and 2. Hold on, let me look that up just so y'all can see what I'm talking about. Because we just, there's just so many things. Like I said, having the wrong knowledge and then being fired up about it. Lisa Nichols calls that ignorance on fire. And it's cute, but it's like, it gets us, it, at the end of the day, it makes us do what the Bible tells us not to do. The Bible says pray and not faint, but we end up fainting because we don't have the right knowledge. What is my message today? You need a prayer life and it needs to be based on scripture. When you have that, you'll naturally start having ranks at the ranks in the realm of the spirit. By Acts 10 and 2 says, he and his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. The Bible don't put anything by accident. It was not an accident that it says that he prayed to God regularly. He didn't have the Holy Spirit. Now, mind you, Acts, the Holy Spirit done fell on the people. The fire of God is in work. So they're receiving something new and good, right? From the Holy Spirit. He didn't have that, but what he had was a prayer life, which allowed the angel to visit him and give him instructions. And then went to Peter, told Peter he was coming. So then this man goes to Peter and gets an impartation. Some of you guys are looking for impartations. You want to grow spiritually. When you posture yourself in prayer, the Holy Spirit will tell you where to go. That happened to me. Case in point, it happens to me all the time. But case in point, I'm going to give you one example. I could give a bunch, but I'm going to give you one. I saw this lady. She was on Instagram. I literally was not watching her before. I saw her and I could just tell in my spirit she was highlighted, meaning she stood out. And I was like, let me just turn her on because I knew who camp she came from. Okay. 
So I've been learning from this person. I knew she was in that camp. So I said, let me see her live stream. As I'm watching her, I hear the Holy Spirit say, go to her event. She was talking about her event. I hear the Holy Spirit tell me to go there. And I'm like, this is inconvenient. It's in another, it's in, I'm in Pittsburgh. It's in California. And I don't really know, right? It was not convenient. By the way, most of the times what you're looking for to get to grow is not gonna be convenient. Praying at midnight is not convenient. Praying at 3 a.m., not convenient. Praying at 6 a.m., not convenient. Stopping what you're doing right now and praying is not convenient. Doing this, you could be doing something else. You could be fully focused on work or your kid or whatever. This is not convenient. This is what we call spiritual sacrifices. So here I am. I go to this thing. It was not convenient. And then I kept saying, is it really you, Lord? Or am I just being like overly spiritual? Because sometimes y'all know anybody or is it just me? Sometimes you just be like overly spiritual. Where you, you don't want to mess up. So then you'd be like, ah, ah. Okay. So I kept saying, I don't know. So then I watched her one more time the day before. And I knew I was like, I need to go to this. But then, I, so then as I'm sitting in my room and I'm still talking to the Holy Spirit the whole time, I closed my eyes and I saw oil dripping down my head and I heard the word impartation. So then I said, oil, impartation. And I just kind of like, I heard it. I acknowledged it. I got my ticket. So I get there. I'm praying. I'm, the, the conference was great. I, I'm the type of person, if I step into any church, I'm not going to come in there as if I know it all or if I know anything. God can speak through anybody as long as they believe in their teaching the Bible, I'm saying. Like, like for example, some, my, some of my family still go to the church we grew up in. I don't go to that church, but if I go and support my family and just, you know, give them, go, go to the church, I'm not going to come in there like, I'm better, I'm more spiritually developed. I chill, I humble myself and I listen and the Lord speaks to me every time. So if I'm going to go all the way over there, I'm hum I'm literally, that's humility. Lowering your knowledge, awards, accolades, money, it's all trash. Lower yourself and submit to God. Listen to what he wants you to do. I will serve in 2.5 seconds. What we need to do, we need to clean up. What we need to do, y'all need some like humbling yourself. That's humility, godly humility. Not that whole like shunning away the light because I'm so holy. I'm not talking about, that's false to y'all. That's a whole nother lesson. I feel like somebody need to really go deep in that so they can get rid of that. But anyway, so I get there. I'm fully committed to learning from Jesus. So I'm going to be obedient in this environment. I didn't fly all the way over here to be a bump on the log. Sometimes you guys, you will not get what God has for you because God is watching the posture of your heart. The reason I brought up Satan, if you look at that scripture, it says that he said it in his heart. What are you saying in your heart? Because that's what the Lord is judging you on. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Listen, are y'all here? Let me see. Let me see if I'm if, if I'm doing too much dance. Where dance at? Am I doing too much dance? <laughs> see, yes. Poverty spirit. Who we talk about, especially in church and how to words. Oh, yes. And some of these churches, I could go in on that but I'm gonna try to stay on topic. Prayer means I begin my runaway journey in my career as a model. Oh, I love it. Amen. Yelling loud and clear became intentional. Yes, Brinstella. It gives us testimony, but it's to witness. Yeah, because testimony is how we overcome. Overcome by the blood and the... Notice how these scriptures just come out of my head. Like, I don't even need... The scriptures need to be in your DNA. Who knows that scripture? Overcome by the blood and the word of your testimony. That's good because that was my prayer request that I not faint. Now I know not. Oh, amen. I'm about to give y'all some application in a second. That spoke through me to say get tapped into the spirit so you are able to be there. Yep. Kendall, absolutely. We're here. I'm good. You're good. Still here. All right. All right. All right. I had to go catch up in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> come on Antonia she got the she got you coming with the scriptures in Revelation 3 somebody compile get through the chat so we can have a list of them scriptures for Desiree so she can send it I don't know how she probably can send it back out to everybody word of my testimony exactly and the testimony of others so I get there I'm praying Matika nice to meet you I'm praying y'all got some beautiful names on here I'm just loving it I love it so much 
I'm praying, right? And she's telling us what to do, like pray right now. And da, da, da. she was giving us instructions. So I'm praying and I'm trying to be obedient. And I'm like, I'm all in. I went by myself. By the way, some of the stuff that you're not getting a breakthrough because you're trying to take somebody with you who ain't ready. The Lord talking to you. They not listening. They got too much junk in their life. You are humbling yourself before Jesus in your private time when nobody sees you, okay? And you're asking the Lord for things. And, and then you're looking to come out of that private time and then take a person. You don't know what they're doing. Listen, go. When the Lord told me to go, I went. Tell the devil to shut up when you go somewhere and he makes you, you're awkward. People are looking at you. Nobody ain't looking at you. Mind your business. Your business is to come get what the Lord said. So when you go places, just know that God is with you. He's with you, right? You are sent. So I get there, I'm doing the exercises and things like that. And I'm like, this is dope. I'm just, I'm happy to be in the building because all the teaching was so good. It was so much teaching. So then she tells us to stand up and just pray. So I stand up and start doing what she said. and then. I hear her as she's dealing with everybody, you know, and she says, I hear her say, that's why her feet are moving. And I'm like, that's why her feet are moving. And then I, for some reason that stuck out to my spirit. That's why you got to ask the Lord to make you sensitive to the Holy Spirit, because then you'll be able to, you have a knowing. It's no reason for me to know, but for, I knew because the Holy Spirit. So I was like praying and I didn't realize I was kind of like marching while I was like in place. Anybody, y'all you know what I'm talking about when you just, you ever been praying and you just kind of like pacing and you like, yeah, I didn't know you praying, you praying, praying. So I'm doing that. And she said, that's why her feet are moving. And I'm like, so then I just kind of look up as I'm praying, like, who's she talking about? Right. And I'm still trying to be obedient. I'm praying. And then she was like, you. So then I'm turning around like, yeah, who's she talking about? <laughs> She's talking about me. She said, you, you, come here. I'm like, so then I go up there. I'm like, okay. So I come up there. She takes my hand. She's like, and I had been at this moment, I had been preaching, but I had been, I was like, I don't have no, you know, I, I, I come from a very like religious uh, church. So it's like, you can't wear lipstick. You can't wear this. You can't do this. You can't, you can't be a woman and do this. Like there were so many like rules that are just foolish. And so I had to really pray to ask the Holy Spirit to remove rules that were not from him. Somebody write that down. Remove rules that are not from the God, from the Lord Jesus, because the Bible, there's also a scripture that talks about doctrines of devils. The movies have made us think that devils are like, you know, devils from the movie. No, if, if you've been drilled on in an in indoctrination that is not lining up with the Bible, that is given to you by a wrong spirit, a spirit of error. That is a doctrine of devils. It doesn't mean the person is a devil. Do you know that the girl who was following Paul prophesying, she was being used by an evil spirit to prophesy. Her gifting is prophetic, but uh, the wrong spirit was speaking. What she said was true, but it was the wrong spirit. So Paul told that demon to come out of her. I hope I'm talking to somebody today. Y'all gotta read your Bible. That's in the Bible too. <laughs> the more Bible you get in you, it literally, the word opens up and you will have such peace. It's insane. So here's the deal. The lady calls me out. I go up to the front. I'm like, okay. She grabs my hand. She's like, you shall preach the gospel. You got it. She just started prophesying to me everything that I really was kind of like trying to make sure that I was right. I was hearing things. So then I was preaching, speaking about Jesus to anybody that would listen, but I still was kind of like, I don't want to like be in the, I don't want to be in error. I did not want to be wrong. Sure enough, she calls me up and everything that was on my heart that I needed like some more clarity from the Lord. She just began to say, this is what it is. This is what the Lord said, blah, blah, blah. Then she gives me an impartation. Somebody with a higher spiritual ranking then begin to bless and impart what they carry in me. Two weeks later, I go to another event because I feel the Holy Spirit go at that event. By the way, you'll always have the option to not do what you hear. Just so you know, nobody's forcing you to do nothing. Spiritual maturity comes and you have it, you take it. You don't, it isn't like God's gonna like stronghold you. That's not how it works. So it's you saying, I want more of you, Jesus, and you do whatever the sacrifices are. So I sacrificed, went to another event two weeks later. She gave me two impartations that weekend. 
prophetic word it's all on video like then the next week the next or two weeks later her mentor i'm going coming from the bathroom coming from the bathroom he's preaching it's quiet in there it's a whole bunch of people and he says you woman of god stand still i'm like me oh god and i was like trying to tiptoe from the bathroom because y'all know ladies when your heels be clacking you be like jesus so i'm starting, i'm trying to like go to the go back to my seat he says you stand still the lord says he's gonna use michelle and you're gonna heal people da, 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 da. then the place goes nuts because he starts prophesying to me then they went so nuts that another prophet one of his friends was like tell her the rest so then he was like you tell her so then he gives him the mic then that prophet speaks into me. Then that prophet brings up the lady who poured into me two weeks ago. They don't even know about it. Then they bring us together and give me another impartation. What am I saying to you? L let me tell you what I was doing. Can I tell you what I was doing the whole time? Like, in, like I couldn't have made those things up. All I had did was increase my prayer life. And you pray by, re it's praying according to the scriptures. The scriptures are not optional. If you don't have the scriptures in you, when you pray and the devil come up, you can't conquer it, period. We're not praying if you would. When people would go to Jesus and say, if you could, Jesus would be like, really? That's kind of like, do you know who I am? Like, why are you talking about if I can? Really, you need to get your faith right and come back and holler at you, holler at me. I mean, if Jesus was in 2023, whoo, some of the stuff that he would be saying to people. If you look at his responses, he would be like, even when the disciples who was rocking with him would do things, he would be like, how long are you guys not going to get it? I mean, hello, did you not see what I just did? You can't be praying if you would. Why? Because you know why? As a human, this is very human. Human, we just don't want it to not work. We don't want to be disappointed. We don't want to say I have faith and then we pray for something and it didn't happen. That sucks. So then let me just pray like I want it, but I don't really want it. But Lord, I trust you. But I love you. Like even if it don't work, if you never do it, I'll just die and go to heaven. God is not looking for that. We're supposed to be winning souls. Not because you're an evangelist or a prophet. It's because when you get Jesus, you spread the good news. Jesus cares about souls. But your soul needs to be prospering or else you will start trying to help people from an empty place and get towed up by the devil every time. So you need stamina. So the same way we train when we go to a new job, when you get a new job, I don't know if you guys, I used to work corporate, right? You get, you get the job and then they give you, you go through training right? They go through you. They show you, this is what our company mission is. This is what we value. Here's the way we operate. Here's what you're supposed to do each day. Here's how to do that job. You have to go through training like that in the realm of the spirit. And when you are following the Holy Spirit, it's spirit led. So your knowledge can only take you so far, like your little routines, your routine cannot become an idol. A lot of times people make their routines idols. You raise that up and that is the reason why you are whatever. Nah. Yeah, training never stops until you die, by the way. Jesus got saved, okay? You got the Holy Spirit, the dove, yeah, go read that. John baptized him. Guess what? He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Nobody told Jesus to fast. He knew he needed to fast because he needed to kill all forms of flesh. Jesus didn't have no sin. So no big booty woman was gonna come tempt Jesus. That wasn't his thing. The only thing because Jesus is pure is food, which is why food is such a difficult thing, guys. If you find that you cannot have control, think about it. Jesus killed all the flesh he could. His flesh, because he's sinless, was food. So that his spirit will be strong. So that when Satan came and offered him something high, take him to the highest mountain. I'll give you all of this. Satan came and tempted him. Notice one of the temptations with Jesus was literally prove it. Some of you guys, we let the world with these Instagram posts, you want to prove, prove you pop it by showing your beans, showing your car, showing your high rise, showing your apartment, showing this, 
That's all worldly crap, guys. Do you know that whatever, all of those that want to do business, whatever you are doing, the Lord has called you to it. You don't have to go and prove a thing. What you need to do is stay on your face and do business with God as your CEO and watch the Lord move. He'll bring you deals that you didn't know existed. I didn't know this company existed that I've been working with. I didn't know nothing about them. They came to me. They asked me to do things. Then they offer me a part of the company because of how excellent my work skills are, which is a godly principle. You do things with excellence. You work unto the Lord. So I want to prophesy to you guys, even right now, if you are doing work right now and you are like, Lord, I want this to be something that you can use so that when people see this, they see your glory. I just want you to just commit your works to the Lord. When you commit your works to the Lord, it says in Proverbs that he will literally prosper you. The Bible also talks about your soul prospering. I would that you prosper even as your soul, mind, will, and emotions prosper. So I want to pray for you guys. And I don't pray based on my emotions. You can't. Emotions change. One second, especially women, y'all, we moody sometimes. You got to have a discipline in the spirit. You have to have a routine in the spirit where you're regularly praying, regularly reading your Bible, and don't read just to check a list. You'd actually have to understand what you're reading so that it can come into your heart so that you can pray along lines of those scriptures. That is how you begin to pop, okay? Things in your life will begin to grow and it'll begin to be amazing because your prayer life aligned with your scriptures in your private time. Private time. Notice I said private. A lot of times we want to do stuff so people can see us and we look holy. I mean, I'm up 3 a.m., 12 a.m. Throughout the day, you got to be praying. What are you praying? You have to have a scripture that gives you the guide. And God needs to be the center of your life. Does this make sense, guys? The way to growth that is sustainable and maintainable, having that prayer life and from that prayer life, knowing how to apply the principles of God in real time. Because sometimes you can be so spiritual that you're not making any earthly sense. Does that make sense? Like, you can pray, but then you also have to work. The Bible says that God is going to prosper. Like literally, you have the ability to get wealth in your hands. The ability to get it, he gives you the power to get wealth. So the prayer point is, Lord, increase my ability, allow my eyes to recognize the ability and give me the discipline and, and the, the knowledge to know this is wealth. Let me be steady right? And do the action that it takes to maintain and to, to obtain and maintain that wealth. That's, you got to pray along that basis. Does that make sense, guys? We don't talk to God after we talk to everybody else. You go to God first. And you got to start looking at what's going on and speaking the word. I was praying for someone and it looked like she was about to die. It literally looked like she was about to die. She stopped breathing. I heard the Holy Spirit say, don't believe it. And I'm thinking, it definitely looked like she died. I was, I was literally like, this is crazy. So guess what I did? The human part of me called 911 because that's what you do when somebody looks like they're dying. But guess what? When I heard the Lord say, don't believe it, I didn't hear nothing else. So then I just commanded her to get up. Why? Because you know how many, do you know get up is in the Bible? That's why you got to have the scripture in you. Because when you, when all else fails, when I was in the hospital about to die, literally bleeding to death because of some doggone birth control gone wrong and made me hemorrhage and bleed out, life was leaving my body. The scripture came in my spirit. See, if you don't have the word in you, when real life is happening and you're dying on the hospital bed, your spirit is not going to go scripture first. It's going to go fear first. But when you have the word in you, I looked at the situation. Faith is, it ain't what I see. I'm a call. I'm a speak life. So I can't even speak anymore because I'm bleeding to death in my heart, which is where God is listening. I said, no, 
I literally just kept saying no. I couldn't even focus any to get the rest of the word out. But I knew in my heart that no, because I said no. The, I'm thinking like no weapon formed against me shall prosper. This can't work. This is not how I die. So the Bible says no weapon. I'm just gonna keep saying no. And that was based on, I commanded based on the scripture, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Do you know? Everything just got normal out of nowhere. And the doctor was like, if I didn't see it, I don't even know what just happened. Like, I don't know what happened. We just got to send you home. A devil was trying to kill me because he knew I was going to be here today ministering. I'm going to be everywhere I go ministering, period. So he wanted to take my life, but I know my rights in the realm of the spirit. It's the legal system. So your prayer life also tells you how to command. And it has to be based on the scripture. So I want to practice what I just talked. I gave y'all a couple stories. Hopefully that made sense. And I gave you some things I want you to really, you got to ask the Holy, always do everything with the Holy Spirit. One time I was sleeping, the Holy Spirit told me to tell everybody, ask the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy. I just kept repeating, tell people to ask the Holy Spirit because they're just literally not engaging. So then how are you going to grow if you don't engage with somebody? If you have a spouse or a friendship that you never engage in, you guys will not grow. Does that make sense, guys? If you have a relationship, if you never engaged your kids, y'all not gonna, y'all relationship not gonna grow. It's not gonna happen. Right? So literally, what this looks like when I say pray the scriptures, I'm gonna do the practical and then I, I'm open for prayer. I don't know the rules, Desiree. I don't know how long y'all be on here, what's going on, but I want to pray. And if anybody needs prayer, I'm happy to pray. Um so here's what the application of what I talked about, okay? Prayer, man ought always pray, okay? Prayer needs to be based on the scriptures. So now I want to show you what that looks like, okay? Now there's levels, and let me just, I want you guys to write this down because praying the scriptures can't always just be battle prayers because God is a God of victory as well. <laughs> so we want to also pray, decree and declare the word over ourselves, okay? The victorious word, the promises of God. So you can't pray properly or decree properly if you, and I say properly with accordance to what God wants us to do in the realm of the spirit, if you don't have the scripture in you. So let's take a scripture. Does everybody, most people, I think the world, shoot, Jamie Foxx be saying it all the time. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Y'all know that scripture? Does everybody know that scripture? I know if you don't know the scripture, you know the song. That's why it's exciting when you also have scripture songs because it really keeps, it gets the word inside of you. Um, when the Lord told me to start doing Psalms 91 three times a day, um, this is back during the pandemic, like when stuff popped off and it was cuckoo. I, it's so many words. I just made a song. Well, the Lord told me to make a song, let's be clear. Cause actually I didn't want to make the song because I was like grieving my mom. I was like, I don't feel like singing right now. I just want to relax. And the Holy Spirit was like, get up, make that song. I'm like, what am I going to say? I don't feel motivated, but I'm obedient. So I'm going to get up here, even scared, be obedient. Even when you're not motivated, be obedient. I'm telling y'all, be obedient. Even when you don't feel, you're not going to always feel like it. Prayer also does not go with, it's not about emotions. Oh, I hope I'm talking to somebody today. I need y'all to know that that's huge. You don't, listen, do you think I want to get up at midnight and 3 a.m.? My emotions say, no, 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 no. I'm just going to go back to sleep and pray at six. <laughs> you don't check with emotions before you do obedience. So the Lord, I'm, my mama just died. I ain't think about other people. This is my time to rightfully so grieve. Hello? But I heard, go make a song. I don't feel inspired to write. I'm not in the mood to sing. But I sat at the mic and I opened up the, the, the app. And I was like, and I messed around with some beats because I'm being obedient. So I just played a couple beats. And I said, let me just see what comes out. Literally, I'm sitting there. And the scripture just comes, I'm reading, I, I wrote down Psalms 91 on my computer so I can look at it, got the mic, and I'm like, 
I dwell in the secret place of the most high. I abide under the shadow of the almighty. Lord, you are my refuge. It was a straight flow stream. I was like, when I got done with that, I said, oh, that's why I don't matter. <laughs> like nothing that I'm actually, I didn't feel like it, but when I opened my mouth, it just flowed. That's what happens when you're obedient. Provision is there. Abraham, is it Abraham and Isaac? Yeah, Abraham was obedient. He got to give up his son. All this time, he couldn't have a son. Now that he got the son, he got to give up the son. You want to kill the son? This is crazy, but I'm obedient. So here I go. I don't feel like it, but I'm obedient. My kid like, daddy, where the sacrifice? I know we going up here, but normally we have a goat or something. Dude, you the sacrifice. Meanwhile, because he was obedient, provision was there. So he did not have to kill his son. So obedience is massive. Oh my God, it's so massive. Come on, Shatea. Come on. Oh, Shatea, Shatea. I think I'm probably saying name wrong. I'll be trying to say names right. So here's what it looks like. We know the scripture. If you can pull it up, pull it up so you can read with me. Um, it, uh, no weapon. Isaiah 54, 17. Let's look at the, I love, I love all the Bibles. Let's be clear. Cause I got so many of them. I like have, I, I'm addicted to the Bible. Because I just realized, like, I've done too much in life. If I could actually just talk about all the supernatural things that have happened. I had a man healed of schizophrenia. The Lord healed him. You know why? Because I knew what the Bible said about it. So when the man came to me and he said, the Lord said you was going to pray for me. I go, really, Lord? No, they ain't never. I ain't never did this. I don't need to do. I don't need to know. I know the Bible says. And I believe the Bible no matter what. You got to kill me because I'm not going to not do it. So I just said the scripture and the demons had to submit. That man is like, I am free. He said, I used to run around the streets naked knowing that it wasn't me, but there's a power over me. So because I have spiritual knowledge, I knew, took him through some different prayers and renunciations and things, commanded them devils to go and they left him. That was the Lord. But it's because I knew the scripture. He needs your body. God uses people. So anything that's going on, we're going to start with you personally. Isaiah 54 and 17. I need to interview that guy because literally it was the craziest experience. I'm trying to be brief, but that was the wildest, probably one of the wildest things. I've seen a lot, but them schizophrenic devils was not playing. The minute I started speaking, he was acting real normal. He said, I believe that the Lord's gonna, you know, he came and he was like, God said, and I knew that was a real moment, but I'm thinking, I ain't never dealt with that in the world. <laughs> so, but I knew what the word said about it. And actually when I think about it, dementia that runs, that's in my family, that's a demon. Meanwhile, I knew this is all the same. The, the enemy wants to confuse your mind to where you take on all these titles, right? So I knew that it could be cast out based on what Jesus did in the Bible. So as I began to go through some things with the guy, literally the demon started, he started, and it, it was crazy, y'all. I was like, is this my life really at nine o'clock at night? I'm dealing with this. And literally the guy, he tried to come at me and the devils was talking through him. And he was like, he was trying to lunge at me. My husband was there. And my husband was looking like, get froggy if you want to. Literally, when he went to do something, it wasn't him. It was the demons in him, in which I knew better. They're not going to, the Lord wouldn't call me to that. I knew better. So I was, I was chilling because I was tired too. It was nine o'clock at night. I've been teaching from 9 a.m. to 6. And then the prayer lines were from 6 to 9. He was the last person. So he does all that. And as he's lunging, the demons say, oh, she's protected. I was like, I literally was so tired at that point of the day. I was like, you will leave him and you will leave him now. Why did I literally, I was like, Lord, I just thank you. If I don't do nothing else, I'm gonna pray and have the scriptures in my heart. Meditate on the, write Joshua, I think it's one and eight. Write that down, study it later. When I say study, take Joshua one and eight and pray it every three hours. And every time you pray it, you do it like three or four times in that moment. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So the point of this is praying the scriptures. What does that look like? Application, applying it to your life. Isaiah 54, 17. Hopefully I, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. <laughs> Tawana said, you have literally stirred me all the way up. Amen, the Holy Spirit. So listen, no weapon that is formed against you will succeed. That's the first line. I'm reading the Amplified Version. So it says, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn. So it's telling me my authority. 
It says this peace, righteousness, security, and triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And this is their vindication for me, says the Lord. Somebody should have got excited. Let me break it down for those of you, you know, that you need, like, let me help you out real quick. It says peace, righteousness, security, and triumph over opposition is my heritage. Do y'all know what that means? That's what I'm supposed to have. It's mine. Oh, I need somebody to just, I need somebody. When you read the Bible, it should be exciting because you're finding out about your will. You're reading the will. You know, imagine like literally Jesus died on that cross. Now he ain't just dead. He rose again, but he in heaven, right? He's seated in heaven, but he left you. That blood left you something. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior, Lord means master. So now that Jesus Christ is master over you, you come into a, an agreement, a covenant, okay? We don't have to sacrifice goats no more and none of that other stuff. Jesus bled out for you. Talk about provision. That happened forever ago. Every single person that is born, provision is already there on their timeline of life. Come on, somebody. So it tells me peace, righteousness security and triumph over opposition so everybody get a sheet of paper you probably already got that write your notes wherever you write list out all the opposition in your life oh 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 oh, 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 oh i get excited list out all the opposition in your life because when you look at that on paper the rule is no weapon. I need you to tap into your inner gangster. I don't know where you from, but I had to slap a couple people back in the day. <laughs> I don't play. I don't pick fights, but if you try me, you know what I'm saying? We can't play like that. David was no punk and neither am I. Okay, listen, back in the day, I always was cool with everybody. But then, you know, somebody will just try to do something to see whatever. And then we got to see. You know what I'm saying? When I decided to put away the anger, because I had a serious anger. I know I'm like, people be like, he's so hyper. I like my family will tell you, she would just spaz. I would just spaz. In my family, it takes 0 0.5 seconds. All my thug cousins, they kill us, they shoot us. It's foolish. That's the spirit, by the way. Spirit of anger, rage. I, I counsel that on the realm of the spirit on behalf of my bloodline. And I be, I'm always going after my family, like, y'all gotta stop this. But that's the spirit. Meanwhile, when I decided to go all in on Jesus, that same inner thing, like literally the Lord uses, you get, you should be vexed that the devil is giving you all that opposition that you wrote down. And you should be vexed because you know what your legal rights are. No weapon that is formed against me will succeed. So these weapons are formed. I wrote it down. These weapons, they're here. A lot of times as believers, they don't want to acknowledge the weapons because they feel like that means I don't have faith. That's not true. The Bible did not promise that the weapons won't form. No weapon formed against you will succeed. So now I can take that line of the word. Do you know that the word of God is the living word? It is life. It is strength. It is marrow to your bones. It is literally, it's what is, it's, it's your operating system. Come on, somebody. So I'm to tell you must be cousins. Girl, we probably cousins. We probably cousins. <laughs> Shall I tell, right? So no weapon, not nearly one, okay? So when I see that literally opposition is happening with my kids, I got to stand up. Do you know the scripture says that the, the, the you, we suffer from the results. We get the results from three and four generations. Like literally we get the curses. We get the horror stories that are a result of your great, great, great sinning. Like somebody way back sacrificed something and you still getting the curse because nobody stood in the gap to break those curses. I'm gonna give y'all some books too because I'm saying a lot and you need to just, this is where I said it, I'm gonna stir your soul. You need to have this knowledge and I'm gonna tell you where to go research and study. So that means you gotta cut some off so that you can start really deep diving and understanding these things. So our prayer point looks like this. Father, 
first of all, when you pray, always thank God. Start with Thanksgiving. Enter into his courts. Courts, heaven is a legal system. I'm going to try not to go to a whole other sermon. Jesus, give it to me concise. <laughs> For another day. Heaven is a legal system. Study Miles Monroe. I came up under Miles Monroe. He explains it so well. There's so many other people now teaching. I mean, it's just heaven is a legal system. Enter into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. So I always start with thanksgiving. Okay? And you got to know that you're going into a spiritual thing when you pray. So you're in the realm of the spirit. You're like literally coming to God in heaven. And you're like, I praise you. You are my Lord. You are my master. You're my father. Right? Literally always every single day, guys. But I'm just, I want to just give you some, uh, some daily practices. Always repent. Always ask for forgiveness. And you have to forgive others. Some of you guys are not getting prayers answered because you have unforgiveness about something. Unforgiveness does not mean that that person didn't do it to you and they're not going to get no consequences and all of that. I, I forgave the guy who beat me up and tried to leave me for dead. I do not, it does not mean he was right, it, that he gets off the hook, that he doesn't deserve whatever punishment that he's going to get. But guess what? The Lord vindicates me. I don't. So I go free. I don't want poison in my life. So I, I forgave my mother for the hurt that I felt because I'm adopted. She gave me away for whatever the reason may be. I'm not mad at it. Like, but at the end of the day, I suffered from rejection and abandonment. I'm not going to hold that against her. I can't. I cannot. I just cannot. It happened. It's over. It's done. And now it's, a, it's something that I can use as a testimony. So when you have unforgiveness, some of you guys, you pray, you pray and you be like, nah, I pray the scriptures, but you got unforgiveness. If I can mention somebody's name, if you tell me about something and then all of a sudden you get huffy puffy, you still need to ask me. You got to, sometimes your forgiveness may take you 30 days, but you got to focus on forgiving until you feel nothing in your heart. God is judging your heart. Amen, Tawana. But that's huge. So Thanksgiving, praise, okay? Asking for forgiveness because there are sins that I don't even know I do. Do y'all know that? I don't know everything. So I always say known and unknown sins. If I know what I did, I'm gonna call it out. I lied. I I did I omitted the truth. <laughs> right? Whatever. Like call it out. Lord, you know what? I be repenting these days. I be if I if I know I should have been working on something and I didn't do it, I'd be like, Lord, I repent because I misused the time that you gave me. And you gave me this opportunity and I'm also disregard, like I'm allowing delay, this spirit of delay. So I repent for that. I ask for forgiveness for that. Repentance means you're going to actually change. If you don't change, that ain't true repentance. So when I see stuff going on and I know that it's not, it goes against peace, security, triumph. I know that this is literally anti-God that's happening in my life. It's confusion. So assess what's going on. When you wrote down that opposition, assess it. Is it double-mindedness? Some of you guys, you may be struggling going back and forth, back and forth, back. You are struggling with double-mindedness. So then you go to the scripture and you look at James talks about a double-minded man is unstable. So now because of your knowledge in the Bible, you can pray for stability in the mind. In the finances, stability in your marriage, stability with your children, stability. You can begin to pray because the Bible says that instability ain't it. So if that ain't it, stability is according to God's scripture, right? So then you, you begin to speak and declare. And the Bible also talks about this. I promise I'm almost done. Binding, you have the ability to bind. When we bind, okay, we are arresting, we're stopping, we're breaking, we're, we're tying it up. So when I see opposition, I'm going to bind it. Somebody type bind in the chat. Bind up that opposition. Okay? Bind means to tie up, to fasten together. Okay? Literally, when you're binding something, you're tightly, you're chaining it. Okay? Now, when you bind, then you have to loose. Okay, so in Isaiah 58, 
let me go here. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So I bind up opposition. All of this opposition in my finances, I bind you. And I decree and declare, notice my decree and declare, no weapon formed against my finances. Because you may see that there's opposition, okay? Opposition, anything that opposes what God says about your money is opposition. So now I need to go deep and say, hey, no weapon formed against my money shall prosper. I bind up every weapon. This weapon of, of, of mismanagement. I am an excellent steward. The Bible speaks about stewardship. I decree and declare that I'm an excellent manager. I'm an excellent steward. Father, teach me how to steward this money. Lord God, I just decree and declare that no weapon formed against my, my finances shall succeed. Every tongue that rises up in judgment against me, I condemn it. I condemn every tongue that's rising up against my finances in the name of Jesus. Now you praying with fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now you are praying with fire. Not because I'm just crunk. No, it's because fire is the word of God. The word of God is fire. The word of God is your sword. So I begin, I see my kids cutting up. I bind up that spirit of rebellion. I bind it. You got to do it with power. It only, do you believe it? Because you're doing it all by faith. I bind up this rebellion and I decree and declare you will be obedient, obedient in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against my child shall prosper. I bind up weapons of rebellion. I bind up these weapons that come through these movies and these cartoons. Lord God, I break its hold over my child in the name of Jesus. They will live and not die in the name of Jesus. I, I decree and declare that their imagination will be godly. I decree that their words will be godly in the name of Jesus. I judge every spirit, every voice that is condemning my child in Jesus name. I speak peace. I speak righteousness. When you bind up like rebellion or whatever, then you need to loose the opposite according to the scripture. But the Bible tells us in Isaiah 54 that peace and righteousness is what the will is of God concerning that opposition. Is somebody here, y'all, is y'all understanding how to pray scriptures? Your basis, if you got to think of yourself as a lawyer, is it lawyer? Yeah, I guess so. Like, yeah, court. Lawyer. So like a lawyer literally present cases. Oh, I might have to make me a little old, whole little class about that. Listen, a lawyer presents a case, but the case is not presented on what the lawyer thinks. It's presented on the law. Can somebody tell me what the law is? Oh, I, I'm really trying to get off of here because I don't want to hold y'all all morning. <laughs> But I'm I'm turned up. Can somebody tell me what our law would be if I'm the lawyer and I'm basing my cases on law? What's my law? Come on, Antonia. Am I saying your name right, Antonia? Okay. <laughs> yes, the Bible. So how am I gonna fight if I ain't got no Bible? What I'm fighting, what's what's the basis? Does that make sense, guys? So this is, I hope, was that a good, do you, do you understand from that scripture? What does it look like to pray scripture? So when you're praying no weapon, most people just say no weapon formed against Michelle Prosper. No weapon formed against my health. No weapon formed against my ovaries. No weapon formed against my reproductive system. No weapon, you got to go deep. Speak to the specific situation. And then it's not one time. So like, let's say that's the scripture for today. And I want to challenge you too. I want to challenge you. Take that scripture every three hours. Take a moment and declare the word of God. You read the scripture, then you pray. Say the scripture three to five times. I say five. I know that seems extreme, but honestly, that's what I do. I'm extreme when it comes to this because I, I need it in my DNA. I don't want to be guessing. That's why I can literally, as I'm talking to you, I don't know if you noticed this entire time. I'm just saying, hey, Google that scripture. Look up that scripture. Look the Holy Spirit is feeding me scriptures in real time. And then he gives me the story. I'm just speaking by the spirit of God. I'm not interested in, I would, if, if it was up to me, I thought I was going to be twerking like Beyonce. Okay. This is not what I chose to do as an occupation. I need y'all to know the real. So I'm not interested in you hyping me up. I just want to be obedient to Jesus because I know what life was like when I wasn't obedient. And I believe in hell. And I believe in heaven. And I'm going to heaven period. And I believe that I should have heaven on earth. That comes from my obedience to scripture. 
and manipulation is evil. Pride is evil. Therefore, I'm out. I don't want to deal with that. She did tell me to write. So I challenge you guys, even for the rest of the day, to get your scripture. I mean, literally, I said times. So like if I want to, if I'm going to do 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 6 p.m., not whatever, right before you go to bed. Sometimes you may go to bed early. Then you do it before you go to bed, but 9 p.m. Have markers to where you're consistently saying the scripture and watch your life change. Get ready for the fire of God because now you are engaging the Holy Spirit and your life will be popping. And you have to speak the word before you see things change. You are not seeing things change because maybe you're not, you've not been doing this or maybe you just need to operate in patience, right? And then keep going. So I hope that helped you. You got to pray the scriptures. You got to pray the scriptures, guys and you need a prayer life, that will change your life. Your life will become a just testimony. You will always be going from glory to glory. It doesn't mean you won't have opposition, but when you know your legal rights, you know how to handle opposition so you are not hopeless. Today, we have so many hopeless Christians. Being hopeless is ungodly because Jesus died on that cross so that we wouldn't be hopeless. I believe in Jesus and him rising again and that covenant Therefore, even when I'm frustrated down and out, those feelings will change. I'm not changing my position. My hope is in God. It's not in my bank account balance. It's not in my relationship divorce. It's not in my kids cutting up right now. It's not in somebody dying and leaving this earth. So now I'm hopeless. My hope is in Jesus Christ. I pray that I've given you some things that you can go and go deeper on, guys. Somebody type, if you are going to go deeper, somebody type that deeper in the chat. Type deeper in the chat if you're going to go deeper in these things that I talked about. I want to give you some books to read, you guys. And then I'm going to pray, Desiree. I don't know if uh, if you need me to do something. Let me give you guys. Oh, ma'am. Sound like you've been flowing. Ooh, I can't watch, wait to watch this replay. I hope y'all writing. Sis came with some gems. <laughs> Everybody going deeper, deeper, deeper. Yes. <clears throat> deeper. Lakeisha been my mentor for years, y'all. So I cannot wait to see what y'all life is going to be. Just hearing how God flow, flow, um, used her today. Amen. Amen. Deeper, deeper. Yes. I love you, sis. I'm so proud of you. Can I say that? I'm so you. proud of you. Thank you. You. Are, you are a warrior. I love you so much. And I just want you to know, I mean, you know, I hit you in, in the inbox the other day. And I just keep yes. hearing, keep pressing. You know, guys, there's when God is shaping you, at, at some point you're looking around like, dang, I'm doing all of this stuff. It's going to feel like that, guys. That's a season. But it's giving you, you're going to realize that what you're doing is compounding in the realm of the spirit. So then when you really get that actual moment, where somebody call you and say, hey, I need you to speak over here, Dad. Oh, I need you to create this. You've been so, you don't even realize how sharp you was because you just been in it, in it, in it. So then when you pop up, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I was like super ready. And then boom, and then you don't, you're done with that season of your life. So I want to encourage you guys so much to never lose hope, never lose faith and don't measure and compare yourself because we all have our individual journeys depending on what God is calling you to. Okay. And so at, at the end of the day, joy comes in the morning, new mercies come in the morning, grab them every morning and be joyful, receive the mercy of God, be easy on yourself. Because a lot of times, ladies, especially if you, if you would Desiree, they mean you a go getter. She's a go getter. So a lot of times us go getters, we can go, 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 go. And then we got these goals that it's not happening as fast as we want. And we seeing people like, just trust the process. Somebody type trust the process. I'm going to give you guys some books to read. That are some of my favorite books. I, I typically, I'm always on the road. So it's funny when Dad asked me, because normally I would have been on the road. But today, um, we've been home. I've been so excited to be home. So um, I have these digitally, but I, I started back building my bookshelf because I used to move so much, y'all. But I got married. She's married now. If I had some hair, I would swing my hair. She's married now. So I can start Your my book. wife. <laughs> oh, <wife. laughs> <laughs> since i just got that book and i'm like one chapter in and it's blowing my mind y'all gotta get read this so many times so good yeah so, so good. good and listen take your time screenshot 
uh, screenshot, screen, screenshot. So this one, y'all can tell me if you didn't get it. Um, Desiree, guys, she can tell you what it is. I love this. I was, I just went to his workshop recently. Oh my God, it was so good. It seemed like it's a little blurry. Is that blurry? Dangerous Prayers from the Court of Heaven. Heaven. Okay, Dr. Francis Miles, he is an excellent teacher. Uh, I went to his workshop recently. He has a new book that just came out. And um, when I tell y'all, it was so lit. I'm t I was really, I was like kind of, this is what I love about Facebook memories. Facebook will show you a memory from three years ago. And you'll be thinking that you're like, dang, I have been on this. I, the Lord told me to study worship and idolatry. And I'm like, me, you know, ooh, like, you know, I, I don't know. I'm like, that just seems like whatever. Meanwhile, I started studying it and I didn't realize how long I've been looking it up until I was on Facebook randomly, like two weeks, two or three weeks ago. And I, I literally just cut it on and I saw Dr. Francis and he was with this lady and they were promoting their new book. This is the new book that they just came out with. It's called Idols Riot. And it's by Katie Salza and Dr. Francis Miles. When I tell you, right before I had been going down a black hole, the Lord was giving me this word and to give to everybody. And a lot of it had to do with idolatry. And I'm thinking, oh gosh, like this is, this is uh, interesting, right? I was kind of nervous because the word was like real strict. Basically, just so y'all know what the word is, the Lord is judging. He's basically... He took me, when I tell you, it was, it was like, it was heavy on me. I was telling my husband, like, oh my God, he's judging your heart and also passing out judgment just based on things that we do. And if you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it simply means repent, turn away from anything you up to that sideways. You know what I'm saying? Because he's going to let you get the results of whatever your sins are. So it's like, you don't have to be perfect. I'm not perfect but daily seeking to be repentant and to keep God at the center of everything because he's just been showing me over and over all this idolatry. Everybody is literally like, so many things are trendy, but it's witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? And it's like the Lord, I, he took me to so many areas in the Bible and just showed me what does judgment look like? He will come list all your stuff and then say, so because of that, boom. And you, it's famine, it's death, it's all of that. So it's like, I don't got time. I don't want that. I need to be protected. I need to be covered. I need, I need to have abundance and provision even in tough times. So the Lord been telling me forever. So then I see this live stream that they're doing and I go to this and they, based on the notes that I had right before I went to this, they filled in all my other gaps. I was just like, oh my God, God is good. He will put you in places that answer your question. So I love this. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. This gonna change your life. I, if I had to tell you where to start, oh, I just really don't know. <sighs> um, probably, man, it's all so good. I don't know. Just, just get this. The Idols Riot is this. I feel like this is a quick read. Okay. Um, all of them are so good. Now, I talked about Deliverance. Bev Tucker, she has YouTube videos as well, but there's she can you can get her book off of Amazon. Okay. And, um, oh, really, Dr. Francis is there in Michigan. Wow. <laughs> go there. If you go, please Facebook me so I can send you a selfie that we took with him. So you can be like, she just came to your idols riot. That'd be so dope. If you go, let me know. Um, setting the captives free. Okay. Bam Tucker. This will teach you about deliverance. Okay, guys. So some of you guys, I talked about a lot, you know, um, a lot of witchcraft sins of all sorts are broken down so you can really have an understanding based on scripture, addiction, spirits of accusation. Um, and it just gives you like information on how does this thing work, right? Really, really good. You can watch our videos on YouTube. It's kind of like a classic, like everybody has that book. Um, oh, the beta Satan. I try to tell everybody to read this because of the spirit of offense. If you find, like, I'm so unoffendable. I be trying to tell people, like, when people do stuff that even gets offensive, I know it right away, so I process it on sight. Because I'm like, the Bible tells me don't be, I have to give forgiveness. It ain't, it don't mean I'm no punk either. I'm gonna let you know what's up. But I'm not, and I'm gonna do it in love, but I'm not, I'm not gonna stand and just be offended, right? And as women, 
oftentimes we get offended. You didn't call me. For, I had so many people like, you didn't invite me to your wedding. Baby, first of all, I don't like weddings. Let's talk about rule number one. I don't like weddings. I don't like planning things. My brain don't think like that about invitations and all that girly crap. I don't care about that. We went to the courthouse because that was easy. And that was great. I don't want to be doing it. I would have I did it in Vegas, but my daddy didn't want to get on the plane. So you wouldn't have been there, period, okay? The few people that was there is because my husband know I talk to them on a weekly basis. So you really should ask your, yourself a question like, oh, wow, I don't call her. So he didn't call her because my husband surprised me. Meanwhile, I knew not to be offended, okay? But they were offended. I'm like, yo, you need to really get to beta Satan. But because I have the spirit of love, I said, I am so sorry I offended you, but I, I, I really, my brain don't work like that. So I'm sorry. I apologize quickly. So you ain't even, so if you choose to sit in it, it's on you. I saw somebody at the mall. Literally, she was like, I seen her. I was like, hey girl, I ain't seen her in forever. She was like, mm. I said this year, I ain't dealing with people who don't deal with, I was so confused. It took me a minute to even realize she was dissing me like in my face. I was so confused. I said, oh, you're mad. I said, she looked at me and I, she was going on and on about, I don't talk to you and you don't call me. And da -da 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 -da. First of all, I said, okay. I said, I am so sorry that I offended you. I really am. I said, like, even if I never see you in months or whatever, like, it's always going to be love. I'm never going to be making up, uh, be offended or nothing. Like, I would never do that. And I just want you to know, like, I'm sorry that I offended you. I did not know I offended you. She didn't know what to do with that because she wanted to argue. She looked at me and her eyes started watering and she just was like, okay. And I said, can I have a hug? Gave her a hug and went on by my business. What? You come over here mad all that month at me? Didn't even tell me you was mad. So I didn't even have the opportunity. But guess what? You're offended. We need ladies, for everybody. But like this book right here really helps you process. Okay. And, and for me, the Lord will check me on like, am I offended? Like he checks me. So there's some subtle offenses that I'm like, oh, I'm offended. So you have to get, you practice being unoffendable. Like for real. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be passive and let people like punk. That's not what this is about. So read the books. These are really, really great. They'll give you some um, details to the things that I talked about. In the meantime, I want to pray. So many do that to me and I'm over here being a mom. Right. It's so many things. We got to just realize we're like, hey, I miss you. A lot of times culturally, like have you, I don't know how y'all family is, but like the way my family growing up, like let's say I come over there. And I ain't seen everybody in a month. They'd be like, mm, wow, Miss Skinny Mini, wow. Look at you. Instead of just saying, hey, you look cute. Or I missed you. We can't never find you. Hey, stranger. That's so negative. Like, that is negative. And I always tell people, can you just say you miss me? They, when you start doing that, they'd be like, oh, I mean, I just guess I never. Okay, well, great. Let's talk about that. I'm going to do better at this. Or let me explain my situation to you. And here's what I'm practicing right now. Like, some people want to talk on the phone. I'm the hardest person to get on the phone because I don't like to talk on the phone. So I'm so sorry that that is something that you, you got to even ask yourself, what's the contents of the conversation? Most of the times it's not nothing. And before we had cell phones, you wouldn't have been talking to me no way. You wouldn't have been texting me. I remember life without cell phones. So even though I got a phone, I don't use it to talk on it most of the times. So I'm going to need you to be okay. And then we need to talk about what does communication look like because you want communication and I'm happy to do that. Also, spiritually, this is where I am. Because sometimes people want communication with you, but they're not willing to acknowledge where you are. People I used to drink with, we ain't got nothing to talk about. We was drinking buddies. You want to talk about Jesus? You want to talk about business growth? You don't got that? Okay, great. So, I mean, I wish you well, but we're not in the same situation. So it's about learning how to communicate. Not because I'm better than you, holier than you. I'm doing it with love, but let me tell you where I am because you probably don't even want to hang out with me anymore. Like some people be mad and it's like, I would probably bore you right now. <laughs> so communication, that's huge. These books will help you understand spiritual things. Um, I'm bored, right? <laughs> and I have a, like, I love to like go to dinner and like be a nerd. Like I just, that's what I like to do and hang out with my man. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Go check on my daddy. Used to be my mama daddy. My mama died. Now check on my daddy. We out there in the garden sweating. That's what we do. I'm very simple and I'm gonna make sure my business is tended to the end. Okay. So let's pray. <laughs> Any questions? Desiree, I'll, I'm willing to, I'll take some questions if you, if anybody has a question about anything I said. 
Y'all better get them in now. <laughs> but we question. got her. <laughs> First of all, I'm so full. <laughs> I'm so full. Oh my goodness. But I, I wrote down fear. Um, and, and I actually should have wrote down laziness because that's my question. How do you combat just pure laziness? It's like I have the desire to pray daily. I do the one where I wake up off my eyes and say, thank you, Lord, for waking me up. Mm -hmm. A little bit of prayer. Mm -hmm. And then I'm praying as I move along, but I know I need to have that one-on-one -on -one time. Mm -hmm. And then with reading scripture, it's like, I'll start, but then my mind go mm -hmm. elsewhere. And so it's just hard to get into that routine. It's not for lack of desire, but it's just, I just call it pure laziness. So what, like, what do I do, child? I don't know. <laughs> no, you. I've been there. You guys, that's actually not laziness. You're not lazy. It's not lazy. It's the, literally the devil wants you distracted, right? He wants you distracted. I'm gonna tell you something, a spiritual secret, like spiritual key, I would say. When you don't feel like praying, but you have the thought to pray is the time that the devil knows you should be praying. Mm, that's good, okay. So that literally, I realized like, like, I remember one time, I, let me tell you how important prayer is. Because, by the way, write down me, we, them. Write that down. Me, we, and them. There's a time, like, like, and I always use this as just an example for your brain, but but this is not like the law. But, like, let's say Mondays you pray for, you, like, as, as a, for myself, Lakeisha, Mondays I pray for me. Wednesdays I pray for we. We is my family, my friends, my inner, like, my circle, Right? Let's say Fridays, I pray for them, the nation, the city, you know, particular like groups, like the world, like uh, outside, right? So, and I'm just making that up. Like, as I just want people, like, it's for your brain to know, like, there's time where you need to pray for yourself, but sometimes I see people only praying for themselves. And that's why they don't have blessings because they're, they're not, God can't use you because all you worry about is you, right? So you got to know how right. to pray for other people. Most of the, their prayer is about building a relationship with Christ. And whenever we go there, the enemy is going to get loud. I recommend for you to start with idols riot first because idols are not little golden statues, okay? Idols are, for example, again, your kids. If your kids got a bunch of stuff going on and it's stressing you out and during prayer time, that's what's rioting, it's in the way of God. So you got to like, it is a spiritual practice to sit there, not go and quit, to keep come right in that moment. You are warring that. Does that make sense? It so, does. It's not. <laughs> so think about it. If you were lazy, would you have even set to try to pray? Mm. No, you would be lazy. Is like I heard I spray and I went back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> like nah, you you like okay, I'm here, but like I'm so distracted. That's that gives you your prayer point. So then in that moment, get your Bible and find scriptures of peace of mind. Find scriptures of whatever you hear in your heart and combat that with the scripture. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. That does not just mean like whatever you think the devil, you know, everybody has a different interpretation of the devil. What that means is like, if I'm trying to talk to God and the devil is present, I have to resist him. Jesus showed us in the Bible when the devil came to him in the wilderness, he like he said, it is written. Whatever the devil would say, Jesus was like, no. So he resisted him. So then he went away. Then he came back again with another opportunity. Because what it's going to feel like, okay, if I know I want to do some videos today for my social media. So when I wake up, I'm excited about that. But I know I need to go pray. But then I'm like, I had to get to my videos. It's not, that's not bad. That's not like getting to the videos ain't bad, but did it get more attention than God? Like it, I mm -hmm. said, I'll put God down and go, oh, that's not laziness and disobedience. And you are fighting, your spirit is warring with your flesh. So the, it gives you your prayer point because now it's like, Lord, remove the things that distract me from you. So then you can start to look for, scriptures about seeking god oh one of my scriptures let me go let, let's see the bible says okay so i have been in i refuse to close this bible can i tell y'all something that's so like 
I have Bibles everywhere. This Bible, now how, how are you going to steal a Bible? I stole this. Can I just confess my sins? The scripture says, confess your sins to one another so that you be healed. <laughs> I stole this Bible from my daddy's house. <laughs> so my mom and dad like have 100,000 Bibles, right? So I took this Bible. Y'all look at it. The page is all, but when I tell you, I love this Bible. And I got about seven more Bibles everywhere. Anyway, this one stays in the bathroom. But for, I kept wanting to close it, but it was just so many things. I, I was like, oh, no, I don't want to miss that page. And then I don't want to miss the other page. So you see it's folded. So I was like, no, 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 I need to read that too. So I was reading this and I noticed, so David has a scripture where he says, seven times a day I pray. And I was like, man, David, no, he'd be intense. Then another scripture, Psalm 63 and six. On my bed, let me read it right from the thing. When, uh, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee, that's a formula. That's how, so you're not lazy, sis. You got to get more word and pray the word. So that way, when the devil come, no, the Bible tells me to meditate. Meditate is like, think about it. And in simplest form, you're taking one thing and you're thinking on it and you're just thinking and thinking on it. Right. And you're rehearsing it. And you're allowing the Holy Spirit to let that scripture minister to you. So when I remember thee upon my bed, boom, God came in your spirit. It says, and meditate on thee. How do we meditate on the Lord? Scripture. It says, in the night watches. So that means that there are some times when I need to be at nighttime meditating on the word. There's another scripture where it talks about when he says, early in the morning when I seek thee. I got to figure out where that is. I think it was 119. It might be 119, but he talks about how you seek the Lord early in the morning. So that means that in the morning time, I need to get up before all of that and just get before the Lord. Now, the enemy is going to tell you you don't know what to say, which is why I'm telling you get the scriptures. And then when you start praying the scriptures and let the Holy Spirit speak to you, okay, then you'll eventually, it takes time. It is a real battle. It takes time. Sometimes you're just going to feel like, man, I don't even know what to say. But you know what's amazing is that you gave God that time. So then that means you got to die to self. Self, shut up. You don't need to know everything. The Holy Spirit knows all. So Father, I sit here. And then you practice quieting your mind. Lord Jesus, this is your time. You may do that by singing a song, right? You may do that by just reading the scripture and just practicing praying the scripture. Show up to the time that you gave God and trust the process. And don't try to make it be like what you see other people do. Because I suffered for a long time. Because I always said, man, I don't pray like so-and-so. Them people pray. Like, they be praying. I'm like, I don't sound like that. So then I just, but how are you going to ever, I realized as I started getting more God and Bible, they're praying the scripture. So the fire that you feel from them is because they know the scriptures. And they believe them and the Holy Spirit is speaking to them. So you just have to, you're not lazy. So renounce laziness. Renounce means to reject it divorce it right i bind up any laziness if even if you feel like in other areas there's laziness i bind that i bind up delay father forgive me for being disobedient forgive me for delaying my prayer time for lack of knowledge father i just i just commit myself to you again i commit my prayer life to you and i thank you father that you hear me when i pray i'm only saying by the way there's a scripture that says i think it's david david say a lot y'all <laughs> it's like he talks about I, you always hear me you always, that's a declaration. So that's also defying the devil because the devil's going to make you think you're wasting your time. You need to be thinking about all this other stuff. So you are not lazy. Have a repetitious, like a, a, a regular time and then just trust the process. You may want to look at Proverbs. Let's say, for example, you take Proverbs chapter one, right? And you just do, or let's go to Proverbs. Let me go to Proverbs uh, three. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Boom. Let's say that's what you're going to be on. You want to be on that scripture for the day. And so you sit there during that time and you, instead of my son, imagine your father talking to you. How do you say your name? Fer Ferrante? Is it Ferrante? Yep. Yep. That's exactly it. Thank awesome. you. <laughs> you're welcome. So it's going to be Ferrante. Forget not my law but let thine heart keep my commandments. That's a commandment from the Lord. So from that place, you say, Father, help my memory 
Allow your word to sink inside of me. Father, I don't want to forget your law. So Lord, as I sit here and I'm repetitiously saying your word, let it become a part of my DNA. I don't want to forget your law. I will not forget your law in the name of Jesus. I remember your word, Lord God. I thank you that your commandments stay inside of me in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are the living word, God. I thank you that your word is life. Now, my spirit is going to think of scriptures about the word, the commandments, the law. But uh, that comes from compiling scriptures inside of you and repetitiously getting them, right? But in the meantime, be simple. But I'm not going to forget you every day, all day. I'm, I just, I remember the word of God. I remember the word of God. Well, now I'll keep it in my heart. God, your word is in my heart. When you see somebody and you feel a little low-key jealous, you know, there's like that innocent jealousy because you're like, dang it, I should have been doing that right? Lord, uh-uh, I bind that. Lord, I will, I, I keep your word in my heart. Your word in my <laughs> Can heart. Can I say, what? I, I had that. When you first popped up, I'm not gonna lie, I was like, oh, here we go. Somebody got it all together. <laughs> Somebody, and I was about to get out. I'm like, I don't even know her. And I thank God that I stuck in and listening because you had a word for me. I know it ain't just for me, but you definitely had a word for me because I was about to be out. <laughs> Amen. And guess what? That means you have such a beautiful spirit. Guys, that we, we're supposed to honor each other, right? And yes. you know what I love is when I can come to Dez and be like, Dez, I'm sorry, I messed up, sis. You know, I was thinking this or whatever. Like that's a that's a beautiful spirit. And I think I know you just blessed somebody else because that's just what happens when we go do stuff. It happens. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. That's amazing. <laughs> Listen. But I love you. Look, I'm glad I say. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Listen, I, and, and again, think about it. I, I don't take it offensive because I know, I, first of all, I used to do the same thing because I was just sick of church people. Right? Yeah. And I was sick of just like, I'm like, ah. And, and then at the end of the day, y'all, I'm loud. I'm opinionated and all of that. So it's what I know that happens. And I trust God over everything. So I don't even lean, lean on me to do anything. God does everything. You know what I'm saying? He'll give me examples. The amount of times I be teaching and people come and say, I was just thinking. And it's because the Holy Spirit is just looking for a willing vessel to open their mouth. Right? And so that was beautiful. That's that's amazing. And so you're not lazy. I need you to renounce. I renounce laziness. I need you to say that, sis. I renounce laziness, disobedience, yes. delay. Yes. Uh, and confusion. I carry the fire of God. And, and I, I carry the fire of God in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. Amen. My mind is stable. My mind is stable. I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. In Jesus' Ooh. name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And then my I want God. you to declare for the rest of the day, my mind is sound financially. My mind is sound physically. Yes, my Lord. mind is sound. Just begin to declare a sound mind and then resist the devil. So literally, guys, when you see thoughts coming during God's time, I resist you in Jesus' name. And you resist mm -hmm. until that spirit leaves because the devil is going to try and he's going to try. That's his job. So sometimes you can try to let go of something. And then right when you feel freedom, then the next day it shows up again. That's a test. Yeah. But test and trials in the book of James, test and trials come to make you what? Who knows what that is? Stronger. Exactly. So now when you see opposition, it's an opportunity. Oh, come on, somebody. Opposition is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Hi, husband. <laughs> My baby just got back from pickleball. So it is literally an opportunity. So when I feel the urge to, to slow down with prayer, that's the time when something is being released in the realm of the spirit for me, and I need a war for it. So receive that as a sign. Amen. I receive it. Oh, thank you so much. I love you. I, oh I love goodness. you too. God bless you. Ooh, God bless you. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Any other questions? I love that. I know that helped more than just, just her. That's amazing. And you I guys, have... go ahead. Um, so you were talking about, so I'm, I'm dating mm -hmm. and um, I have a, a, a suitor that, you know, a, a lot of them, I don't really, you know, necessarily take them at their word as far as, yeah, I'm gonna marry you. I'm your future husband. And, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna fast and pray you know, to confirm and I'm watching fruit and, you know, I'd be open and honest. Like, you know, you can say what you want to say, but I'm waiting on God to move. Mm -hmm. But how in the process of dating, how do you not make the time or the communication an idol? Right. Good question. Husband? Say it again. Oh, I thought you was listening. Uh, I kind of was. Oh. 
I just always like to. Now, my husband is a proper. I love when he just gets in on relationships. Well, I will say this based off. I'm just going to say what, what hit me. I do know that it's human for us all to think about love, period. Mm-hmm. Anyone that acts like they're not thinking about it, maybe that's that's that can be argued. But we all really care about that. I have a chapter in my book called The Love App. It's always open. We're always wondering, when am I going to have love? When, you know, it's it's a big question. Even if you're focused on something else, I'm just going to focus on me. I'm going to just do this. That app is still open. You're just wondering, is Mr. Wright going to show up? Is Mrs. Wright going to show up? What you have to do is be honest with yourself and ask yourself first the truth. Really, are you just telling yourself that you're focusing on you and what God wants you to do? Or really, are you really, 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 really dead set on having a relationship? And that is the first step is really where is your brain? Because when you're when I focused on God with the understanding that, of course, God, I want to be happy in a relationship. Mm-hmm. I am a lover. I am much better with a person. Mm-hmm. So it, it is not about I need to be alone. It's all about God. You know my heart. You know I desire a relationship. But right now, I am going to trust you. Mm-hmm. Now, as a man, my responsibility is to be held accountable of how I find a woman and then how I pursue her. It is a woman's responsibility to be available to 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 join forces with someone that God is bringing your way, and they got to have the character that Christ demands us to have in Ephesians. When a man loves a wife, he loves he loves a wife like he like Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. When we recognize that our role is not to chase, I'm talking about women, y'all's role is not to chase us, and we're in a society now where men feel like, yeah, chase on, you know. It's it's being honest with yourself with where God really has you. And if you know that you're focusing on you, then you're doing the right thing. God knows your heart. God is going to pr- protect you and he's going to put the right people in your face because a man can smell a woman who's not being honest. Mm-hmm. You know, some women like, they'll like, uh-uh, I ain't got time. I ain't trying to do that. Nuh-uh, nah, 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 nah. And a man be like, okay. That's what she tell everybody. He'll wait two weeks later and then come right back at you. And then he'll get a different version of you, depending on what life ha- what happened in your life. You have to trust that God knows what's best for you. And because you are a woman, you don't want a man that you got to raise and that you got to cover in the spirit. You want a man that's going to pursue you because he knows he's available to cover. Well, come on. And Tony, and Tony like, hey, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I always love when a godly man speaks on those things, you guys, because I mean, there's, I'm going to tell, I'm very practical, literal about like what God taught me and the Lord, um, showed me literally, I have a journal somewhere where he was like, this is why this relationship didn't work. This is, I, I didn't realize they still were idols because I was like, this is a good guy. He gets my time. He gets my attention trying to be vulnerable with somebody because they're a good person, but I'm still not vulnerable with Lord, with the Lord. The Lord was like, that's why you didn't have the spiritual, the ability to discern the spirit that was a red flag in that man because you put him above your time with me. Your first, the Bible, the, the Lord told me then when I was dating, the order is me. The Lord was talking to me. Like this is literally, he said me, okay? Then you. Because when you put me first, I'm going to shape you. You're going to implement what I'm teaching you. Then you become who I called you to be. Then you'll know how to deal with them. So I was putting them, family, dating, business, all that. That was getting put before God. So the order, and then even so, I'm going to just tell you all the truth. I was so, I don't want to do it wrong. I just stopped listening. I, I was like, whatever. The Lord told me, because he literally told me my husband chose me. So I said, okay, great. I'm going to just wait till the pop up. Like, I'm cool. I really believed it. So then I stopped even, because I used to be like, I just want to be going. I love going on dates. I want to go on a date. Take me to dinner. So then I was going to dinner because like, I like the experience of dating. But that was ungodly. Because now I'm having conversation and eating food and breaking bread, which really is a spiritual activity. I'm break, I'm, I'm doing that because I want to pass time until my husband chose. Nah. And the Lord started when he told me my husband chose me for months over like literally 
he started showing me what choosing looks like. These guys are not choosing. They're just enjoying time. Everybody's enjoying time, passing time. Time is a gift from God. Don't get like, how about you just put your focus on God? So when I did, that's when my ministry blew up. That's when everything, I started getting all the impartations even more. That's when I started hearing the prophetic activated in me like crazy. I understood. Like all, I, I was growing so much in God that I heard the Lord tell me to go be in his house. And I didn't even, I had just came back to Texas because my mom was dying. So I didn't have a church. My church was in LA. So when I go, I looked on the internet and I'm like, where Lord? I don't know no church to go to. I saw this chick that my cousin, my cousin told me like to follow her because she's dope. She was just doing her thing. She was singing. I'm like, man, what church she go to? She fly. She got, you can tell she got the Holy Spirit. So I'm like, where is that church? Okay. I'm going to that church. So with that, I go to the church and my husband was there. And by the way, I didn't go to church for a man. I went because God told me to go be in my house and I didn't know what else to do. So I actually, um, just was like, I'm gonna be obedient. And I trust the process. So I go to that church, never saw my husband that day, but he saw me. Okay. I never saw him. So three within three weeks or maybe four weeks, cause that Saturday, we ended up talking, the girl who I thought was dope asked me to do music with her, which was random because she never heard me sing. She never heard me sing, but she said, I want you to do music with me and I want you to meet my manager. It was him. That was me being obedient. I was literally placed at the feet of my husband. My lease was ending. Hubby like, I'm about to make you mine. He didn't waste no time. He never made me wonder his intentions. He was very honest with me. We talked about no sex before marriage. All of that. Can you imagine? I was not with the rule of no sex before marriage. That like, now, mind you, by the time I got to him, I was. But before, like I dated, I was fornicating. See, some, most people be trying to tell their story. They don't keep it real. So then I knew when the Lord, there was a time period where I stopped dating, stopped having sex, no masturbation, nothing. I know that sounds crazy. Somebody like, oh my God, that's a real thing. Do you know masturbation is a spirit? Literally, can you imagine a demon influencing your thoughts so that then you can have a reaction in the physical? So I had to literally let the Lord shape me. So there was a season where it's like, Lord, just shape me. And because I trust you, I can relax on when because it'll be perfect in your timing because the Lord loves who he's bringing to you. So you need to get that crap out of you. Get any plan. Like if you want to date multiple people, that has to be burned out of you by the fire of God. Nothing else will take it from you. If you know you like attention from men in general, that has to be burned out of you. If you know that there are just things that you want to get together, you don't need to be perfect. I didn't come to my husband perfect. He didn't come to me perfect. We grow together daily. I love it so much. But you have, there are certain things the Lord is not about to put you with that part. Like if your God or dang husband is working on himself, that's what you should be doing. Trusting that God is leading you. So hopefully that, you know, that helps. But I literally consecrated myself and I wasn't a weirdo. I'm like, I wasn't going around announcing, you know, I'm so holy and consecrated and my man, I just chilled. Like I was really chilling. I was into the Lord. I was working and support. I mentor. I uh got a mentor. And here's how I got the mentor. I went to her because the Lord told me to help her. Literally, I said, hey, here are my skill sets. If you ever need any of these things, I was giving it. I never asked for nothing. I gave it. I added value to her life. She literally elevated me. And then the relationship took off. And it's because I had good intentions, right? And I followed the word of the Lord. The Lord told me to message her. So I did. So the Lord will put people in your life that will cultivate you for the season that you're in. And then you'll look up and your husband saw you before you saw him. And then long story short, we got together. So just, just, it's really, it's being in love with Jesus and making sure that you're not a weirdo to where, like when my husband was trying to holler at me, it wasn't like, it wasn't, and it wasn't trying to holler. But when he did tell me, cause we went out to go eat some crab legs and he was like, at the end of that dinner, he said, I'm going to shut this down. Don't give me a chance because I'm going to shut this down. Don't be so holy that you just like diss that because you want to be holy to Jesus. <laughs> so what I do is just inquire of the Lord with any man, even before I met my husband, when a dude would say something to me, I just asked the Holy Spirit. And he revealed to me that dude has compromised, meaning that dude still, he want to have sex. He ain't trying to, he, he's not trying to put sex 
uh, up until you get married. Well, that ain't the guy for me because it's actually a no. I'm not fornicating. So goodbye. And then you got to let it go. No communication. Shut it down. Like, you know what I'm saying? Using the Holy Spirit to be your guide and having fun. Have fun in life. Like, you know, just talk to the Lord. When Asa said, I'm going to shut it down. I said, hmm. I didn't say nothing to him. I just inquired of the Lord. And then I watched his action and the fruit lined up. I want to yeah. say before I'm I, sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I just want to say this before I go and get cleaned up. But um, one thing that I know the Holy Spirit is telling me to share is something that women uh, may not realize is happening, but this is a different day. It's a different day. When Adam was in the garden, when God created Adam, Adam was in the garden, all the animals had a mate. The truth is Adam was, un he was unhappy because he didn't have someone. And when God ended up realizing how unhappy he was, he created an answer. The answer was Eve. Eve was never meant to be uh, the beginning of the process. She was an answer to a problem. That means value. Something of value had to come and help Adam. I think the problem today is the way the world is today, we're more honest. Women desire the same things that men desire. And because of that, men, we don't know what it looks like to have value in front of us because men want to have sex every day. And then there are women, they want to have sex every day too. It's no longer a gift. It's no longer something to earn. And I think if women can, can just from speaking from a man, if we can uh, not be enabled from opening up doors, not being, uh, not enabling us for respecting. And even if you want to do something and you know you shouldn't be doing it and want to do it, don't let us know that, you know, just, just take a hit and go home, you know, like, uh, and then go home. You can, you can eat some ice cream or something, but, but make us don't make it so easy because what men are doing and we talk all the time, women desire the same things that men want. And because that we get the privilege of just being able to not be held accountable for pursuing because women, they enjoy the benefits just as much as the men. If it's money, women are making more money than us. Some of them have higher education than us. Some of them don't. And then a man uses his money to do what he needs to do. And then a woman that does, sometimes she uses sex to get what she wants. Everyone's playing the same game. If a woman can just go ahead and allow God to have her of value, like he intended a woman to be when she was born, and that is to have value. And that means she is an answer. A woman that is born is an answer to someone. She's an answer, just like Eve was. And because you're an answer, your value has to go up. You have to recognize what you have to offer. The, it, it has to be earned. It has to be respected. It is something that you just don't give away because you desire the same amenity. And that's really what men are saying everywhere. You know, well, she, she wanted it. She the one that called me. She the mm -hmm. one that did this. She the one that did that. And unfortunately, that shouldn't be an excuse, but it does force a man to not take accountability with the whole idea of pursuing. Yeah. And now that both amenities are being met, the woman is now waiting saying, when is he gonna act? When is he, he never had to act. Mm -hmm. He never had to pursue. He never had to earn. So it's kind of hard to make him do that. And then both of, that's when those ungodly soul ties take place. And then it just lasts and goes on and on. My takeaway that I want uh, women to definitely know and any man that's listening to is that they're, with, men are in action. We act and women react. That's why a man that treats you good, he gets a good reaction. A man that treats you bad, he gets a bad reaction. Women are the reaction to, 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 a, to a problem. So do you have value? That's the question. If you don't have value, that's what you and God should be working on. Mm -hmm. What is my value? God, help me have my, uh, uh, boost my self-esteem. Lord, you help me. I have value because I'm your daughter. You know, get your value up. So when a man sees it. You recognize, yeah. Yeah. So Absolutely. that's that's really what I feel like. Men are not being taught, mm -hmm. but I'm sharing what we talk about. And it is that women, y'all desire the same amenities that we desire. And because you all don't don't really hold on to that value, men don't have a reason to be accountable. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, this is so good. Um, some time ago, 
revealed to me that the that the idol that I had to come against was companionship. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so I took a, I took a break from dating. Mm-hmm. You know, I took a, date, a break from the dating apps, and I was like, I got all this stuff that I need to work on. Um, and so I was being intentional. And then this this guy slipped through the cracks. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, okay, um, I'm still on break. <laughs> and I'm and I told him, I'm still yeah. on break because I got things that I need to get done yeah. and focus on. And so he's like, okay, I ain't going nowhere. I'm like, okay, yeah. we go, we gonna see. And yeah. so it's and and even like he's all he's his like I'm like, I do background checks. The dude gave me a social. I'm like, that's suspect. Like in my, I was like, why you got, I don't know what you need. And I was like, okay, this is a little different. Um, and, and, and even, you know, how it's been thus far. And it's like, okay, well, you know, like I told him, I said, you bogarted your way where you at. He's like, cause he was asking, when am I going to get promoted to get your real phone number? Uh, that's how I got the social. I said, I, there's levels to this thing. I don't, I don't, I do things level, levelly. Yeah. Yeah. And so he, he was like, yeah, like I had to, I I had to knock down some walls to get even where I'm at. I'm like, okay, well, I'm just saying, you know, I've been by myself. I've, I've done it by myself and I don't know how not to. Yeah. So So that means, cause, cause the thing is like, for me, I was very hard. Like I enjoyed dating and all that, but I was not, I actually didn't even want to be married because I prefer to have the option for you. Just mind your business. I do my thing. I love my life. My life is great. And the Lord told me I was going to be married like in 2018, I think. Yeah, 2018. And I was like, oh, so like he started prepping me. The mentality that I had was definitely like playgirl. Like I enjoy just fine dining and like whatever. And like mm, I wasn't really I was not trying to be tied down. And so when the Lord spoke to me um, about that, then the devil tried to take that and start showing me men who were godly talking about all this stuff. It's like I stopped trying to assess that and. I, first of all, I think you need to study too. just renouncing. Look, you need the idols riot and then understanding. Um, uh, there's a, there's some spiritual stuff that you need, that you need to understand everybody that you have to understand, like condemnation, the fear of getting it wrong with God will make you be way too intense, right? It, you got, you got to take the pressure off because you trust. Do I trust that God is going to give my husband? Yes. Great. When you said companion, that are that when you have when the when your whole when the Holy Spirit, who is your companion, when you really when that relationship get real sharp, you'll be so chilling. And so, and when you recognize your value, then it's like it's you know what you carry, so you have a level of calm confidence. So you're not in fear. And you, if I still can't be around the man or have a phone conversation or anything like that there's probably some stuff you need to pray out like because it still shouldn't be if if I were doing that like you only can do text or whatever and not having a regular conversation I would wonder what in myself I don't trust which no, means- I'm good now I'm good now but this he revealed that to me some time ago oh, so good, we talk good. we talk for yeah. you know for on a regular basis but and what I should- do let me just tell you, like what I do, if I'm really unclear about, because God is, he's not the author of confusion. So if, and I'm not saying you confuse, I'm saying like, if something just doesn't have like all the way clarity, I would do a 24 hour fast, like literally for the day, it can be from six to six or like whatever, I'll fast and I'll go to a scripture, which God literally reveals the secret things. Of, it's somewhere in Daniel about the secret things where it's yeah. water only. And you're praying every three hours for clarity on that situation. And the Bible talks about to be able to discern the spirit. When I was dating and I wasn't dating, I stopped dating. And just when I knew that my husband was coming, my strongest gift was operating in the ability to discern the spirit. So there was a guy who was real holy, like he was real godly and he was popping, right? And it was good, 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 good. And I had mentors I can show him to. And they were like, wow, he's amazing. And then one day he didn't like something I said. And then I could tell his spirit shifted. So it wasn't that he was bad. It was that those things are on my uh uh-uh list. Like, it's like, nah, because he was like, it it was, it was just a no. He, I can't remember all of it because it was been, it's been so while ago, a while back, but he did something that showed me his true color. It was after I said the prayer. And so what I realized is my secret weapon, Lord, what's the spirit in this man? And then listen, 
and he's going to do something within that 24 hours. There was one, so many men want to marry you when you a good woman, period. Everybody, I didn't have no issue with people trying to marry me. So this one guy was like, I want to marry you, blah, blah, blah. And then I prayed, Lord, show me this man's spirit because, you know, I like him. He's cool. Like what's going on? He called me not too long after that and was talking and some, it almost was like, I, I literally in the spirit saw like an invisible and I didn't realize I wasn't studying angels then, but really the angel of the Lord had him tell me the truth. He basically was like, man, your standards too high. He, and he didn't, he, he was, that's pretty much what he was trying to see. Like, was I going to budge? That happened so that I knew his spirit. And once the Lord reveals the spirit, I know y'all got to go. I'm going to let y'all go. Once the Lord reveals the spirit, you have a choice. He's not going to make you shut that person down. So then you have to walk away. That's what I had to learn is like, once the Lord showed me this one guy was willing to compromise, it was my call to walk away. I could have married him, but I would have always had this compromise issue. And I would have had to hope he cared about the Lord enough to, to cause there's other areas um, that he was compromising in. So, you know, you got to pray for the ability to discern spirits. Okay. And then I would do a fast so that the Lord can bring you clarity about that particular guy. And then like also so that you are declaring your trust on that fast that God is literally sending you him so you can relax. That would be, that would be the main thing. I know y'all gotta go. So I wanna pray you guys out. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. If you guys have any other questions, hit me up, LakeishaMichelle.com. Father God, I thank you so much for every person here. I thank you, Lord, for all of the answers that you bring. Lord, let them just put you first, Father. I bind up any fear. I bind up any confusion, Lord God. And I just thank you that clarity is their portion. Comfort is their portion from you, Jesus. Lord, I just thank you that you give them the answers that they need. I thank you that their prayer life increases, Father. I bind up prayerlessness, Lord God. And I just thank you for peace, prosperity of all forms, Lord. And I thank you for righteousness and humility being released. I thank you, Lord God, that what they put their hands to will prosper in the mind mighty name of Jesus. Everybody shout an amen. Thank you for having me. And I will see you guys on another live stream. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Thank you. Y'all have an amazing weekend. Amen.